and we are recording. Hey there YouTube, my name is Kirby the Boss. Welcome to my office, welcome to my channel, and today I want to encourage you. I know it's been a minute since I've done a sit down video like this, but I'm really excited for 2022 because there's going to be a lot more of these videos coming back to my channel, which I'm so excited about. That's not what this video is about today. This video is about encouraging you, the person maybe who has been walking through sin, the person who's been walking through shame, the person who feels unredeemable and as though there might not be any hope for you in your relationship with God based on areas where you have fallen, where you have stumbled, places where you thought you could never fall into sin and yet here you are thinking the absolute worst of yourself. You're not the only one. This is something that happens to, I think, a lot of people. <laughs> you know, we see these Christians all over social media, maybe you even look to me, and you think, oh, there's nothing wrong with them. They've never sinned this far. And the reality is, is that we as Christians, we're human. We stumble, we fall, we are still tempted to sin. And it's hard with the flesh, with the world, all these things throwing things in our face saying that this is what's going to please you. This is what's going to satisfy you. Sometimes we take that bite, um, but it leads us down a road of shame, a road of blame, and a road of thinking that there's no way you could turn back to God and that he would hear you, love you, accept you, and bring you back into the place that you once were with him. But I wanna share something with you. That not only do normal Christians go through this stuff, but we can even see in just reading scripture alone, taking it way, way back to the Old Testament, that the Israelites struggled with this same thing. Let me start off by saying there are three types of sin in the Bible. There is sin, but then you can go deeper into transgression, and even deeper than transgression is iniquity. Let's break that down. So sin is when you fall short short of the glory of God. It's when you miss the mark. It's when you disobey his commands for you. Now we're all guilty of sin. We have disobeyed the commands of God. We have fallen short of the standard that God has set for us. Um, but praise God for Jesus because he redeems us. He pays for our sins. He pays our debt in full. Then we have transgression. Transgression is to sin over and over again. It is to choose to deliberately disobey and walk in sin. So maybe you sin and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. But to have transgression is to choose to sin. However, iniquity is a step further to which one chooses to sin but without a heart of repentance. They do it not even thinking like, oh, well, you know, God will forgive me, but it's like, I'm not even gonna repent for this. I'm literally just gonna go about this and have fun because this is what I want. Don't even think about the repercussions of our actions. We don't even think about the fact that what we are doing is causing us to be separated from God. Not that he backs off from us, but that we are making decisions that, that lure us away from him. I want to I wanted to explain that first before I read this because maybe you've sinned, maybe you're in transgression or maybe you are in straight up iniquity where you don't even feel like you have a heart of repentance anymore. Let me read this. It's in Psalm chapter 130. I'm just going to read the whole thing. It's eight verses, but it says in the ESV translation, "Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice." Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Verse 3. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? So the psalmist who is writing this is recognizing the fact that you are a holy God. And, and you know everyone's sins, transgressions, and iniquities against you. Like who can stand before you? And you knowing that information. But verse 4, and I love this. And I really hope that this is where this begins to really encourage you. Maybe these, these verses that we just read relate to you, but listen to verse four. But with you, there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Y'all, God is so forgiving. And I know that I'm saying that and maybe you've even read this and it's like, okay, yeah, God is forgiving to everybody but me. I live in that camp very often where the grace of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God is for everybody else except me because my sin is so much greater. Um, all sin is sin. <laughs> let's, let's be honest with that. You know, he is forgiving in light of knowing not just our sins or our transgressions, but even our iniquity to the point where we have just not even developed a response of repentance anymore, but we finally are like, Lord, I, I need you. 
but that shame can sometimes keep us from turning back to God. He knows. He knows. He knows what we have done, and yet he still hears our cry for mercy. He still offers forgiveness, and he is still good and, and present and loving. Like he is. Like there is still hope for you. And let's keep on reading about that. Verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. And I love this because as we turn from our sin, our shame, where we have fallen and stumbled and walked away from God, in turning back to him, we need to wait on the Lord and we need to find hope in his word. I think even in those seasons where we are wandering and doing our own thing and falling into sin, I would ask, are you waiting on the Lord? Are you sitting in, in, a, in a posture and a, in a place where you are submitted to the presence of God? You are waiting for him to speak. You are waiting for him to show up. And that, that posture of submission, we don't often find that when we are out doing our own thing, when we're in the world, when we're feeding our flesh, the, the pride of life, the desires of our eyes, the lust of everything, right? We don't find ourselves in a humble posture of waiting on the Lord, being, being submitted to him and his will for us, which is good, right? And the second thing that we don't often do when we are in those seasons and places of doing our own thing to appease our own flesh and desires is finding hope in his word, finding truth in his word. So in this season now where you have hopefully come to your wit's end of knowing that these destructive habits of chasing our own fleeting desires, which are only going to leave us more empty, more ashamed and probably more afraid to turn back to God, even though we know that there is perfect fear and perfect love in him because he is good, still offering mercy and grace and forgiveness and all these things, we can find hope again. We can find hope again in returning to his word. We can find stillness and peace and his presence again in waiting on him to move. I promise you it might be hard to get back into the word after desiring things <laughs> that are absolutely contrary to the word of God and, and to our nature in him. But when we show up and we read the word and that discipline starts to make its way into our life, it develops a desire within us. And that's beautiful. We find hope in his word. Verse six, my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. Really, are we showing up and waiting on the Lord? Like he has been patiently waiting for us to turn from our sins and to turn our thoughts, our attention, our affection back to him. Let's do the same where we sit in waiting, in yearning, in searching for him. Verse 7, O Israel. Now this is talking to the people of God. This is a very specific season that they were in. I believe that they were in exile in this season. Because they were choosing things other than God, he said, okay, you can have what you want. But then they come to their wit's end and they realize, wait, we actually need the Lord. Um, and that's what they needed to do. They needed to wait in the Lord as well. But it says, oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, right? You were putting your faith in other things, your hope in other things, your joy in other things. Now you need to put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there is steadfast love and with him is plentiful redemption. I'm going to read this next verse and then that'll wrap it up. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Again, iniquities is premeditated sin without repentance. And I just love this because I think in our sin, when we are giving into the world, the flesh, the desires, the pride of life, all those things, we so often, as we listen to, honestly, the daunting voice of the enemy and demons and the principalities against us that are trying to lure him away from us as well as our own flesh we then convince ourselves and begin to believe the lie that god doesn't want us that he can never use us again that there's no way he could ever fully love us again like he might love me a little bit but he won't fully love me he won't fully redeem me he won't hold this against me but the reality is is that as we as we wait on the Lord and hope in his word, we will come to understand the, the actual truth that scripture says about his character. The Bible is God's revelation of himself to us. Like this, if we want to know God, this is the, the perfect book, the perfect thing, the perfect medium to tell us about who he is. And it's telling us, his words are telling us that in him there is steadfast love, a love that pursues, 
a love that is in it for the long run. And with him, there is also plentiful redemption. Maybe you feel as though you are unredeemable. That is not true. That might be how you feel about yourself, but that's not how he feels about you. There is ample mercy for you, ample redemption for you, ample forgiveness and steadfast love for you. And he is patient and kind and loving. He understands the decisions that we are making. We don't. Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they do. We really don't understand the repercussions of our actions because it leads us to such a state of shame and a state of not knowing our worth, whose we are, having a skewed view of our father as well. But he is kind and gentle in allowing us to, to be cultivating a new understanding, an actual revelation of who he is through his word. And it says that he is good and loving and able to redeem all things. But will we repent? Will we turn to him? Will we look at what we have done and say, God, you can do more though. You can clean this up. You can make me new. We have to take that first step of faith and walking back to him and turning back to him. He's going to welcome you with loving arms and there might be consequences to your sin and he will help you walk through how to deal with that with love and with grace. Because sometimes there is consequence to the decisions we make. We can trust and know that the truth of the voice of our father, he says, that he has steadfast love, forgiveness, mercy, and redemption available to all of us. But we must turn to him. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff now that I'm going to be posting again. And let me know what kind of videos you want to see if you want more encouragement and truth like this and all that good stuff. I also have a podcast that comes out every Wednesday if you want just more encouragement, like 25 to 40 minutes worth of exegeting scripture and getting into the, the hermeneutics and systematic theology, all that good stuff. Go check it out. I have it linked below. But until next time, whatever that is, I love you guys. Have a happy and a blessed new year and know that you can start fresh with God and he is able to make all things new. Love you guys. Keep on keeping on. Catch on the flip side.